I've played a lot of Super Nintendo games in my life, and while many of the single player games out there are tremendously fun, sometimes it's even more fun to play these games with your friends. That's the purpose of today's episode, to recognize the top 10 cooperative games on the Super Nintendo. Now this video is a special video because it's our first monthly community video giveaway and the lucky winner was Matthias Bowles with his suggestion of top 10 co-op games. Now, top 10 co-op games ever, that's kind of a large scope for what I do here. So I was able to talk him down to just <laughs> Super Nintendo games. But that issue is another challenge to me. What is cooperative play versus multiplayer? Well, for me, cooperative play means that you're working alongside somebody to accomplish an objective versus working against them, right? So this list is only going to contain cooperative play, not necessarily multiplayer. With that being said, let's begin. Known as Ganbare Goemon Yukihime Kyoshutsu Amaki, this was the first time Western audiences had an exposure to the Ganbare Goemon series, as the previous four games were not commercially available in the United States, and to this day, it is still a trend that many of the Goemon games focus on solely Japanese markets. In fact, the series had 34 different unique titles, and only four of them have seen American releases. So thankfully, Konami decided to grace us with this title on the Super Nintendo. Traditionally, Goemon games are single player, but The Legend of Mystical Ninja is a two player co op experience where one player controls Goemon and the other controls Ibisimaru. In the United States, they're called Kid Ying and Dr. Yang, but that was later retconned to the correct names once Mystical Ninja starring Goemon was released on the Game Boy. The whole idea is that we're in the town of Oedo, and weird stuff is happening. So our characters decide to investigate, and through tons of stages, you'll uncover tons of mysteries that pertain to the story. It's genuinely a good time. I have a very strong love-hate relationship with Zombies Ate My Neighbors, mostly because I think it's a gigantor waste of time. But I'd be wrong to say that this game isn't an absolute blast when you're playing this with a friend. Honestly, if it wasn't for playing it with my lead moderator, KingNick69, I likely wouldn't have played this for longer than a few minutes. The whole idea of Zombies Ate My Neighbors is that you need to save your neighbors from Dr. Tongue while going through tons of levels that are inspired by various horror films. If you save enough neighbors, you can get bonuses, but single-handedly the most important trilogy of things you can do is A. Conserve your ammo, B. Grab an energy drink, and C. Choose a friend that you can tolerate for a few hours because you can't save in this game. You'll have to beat it in one sitting. Why? Because if you use a password, for some weird reason, you lose all of your power-ups. Thanks, Konami. This game has no business looking this good. It's a Wild West shooting game with steampunk and science fiction influences, and it was made by Natsume. It's so interesting to see how many games Natsume put out that were just genuinely fun. This is the third time I've mentioned them on the channel. Abadox on the NES, it was a shooter that you should check out. Shatterhand has one of the best soundtracks on the NES. And here we are giving another Natsume title a superlative, the eighth best co-op game on the Super Nintendo. Funny how the world works, huh? Wild Guns is an amazing shooter, and I think you and your co-op partner would have a wonderful time playing it. If you want to play it on a more modern medium, it was re-released in 2016 as Wild Guns Reloaded for the PS4, and it's just as good as the Super Nintendo experience. On the topic of Wild West Rudy Tooty McShooty games, Sunset Riders is a cult classic and a well-known title from Konami, where you play as Steve, Billy Cool, Cormano Wild, and Bob. The whole principle is that you and a friend can go after bounties and fight an onslaught of enemies on the frontier. To me, this game is basically a Wild West Contra, and Contra is phenomenal, so why not give it a shake? I think you'd like this. This game is a nightmare. I say that with love. 
Smash TV historically is an incredibly difficult twin stick that was received with universal acclaim. To me, that's because the formula for the game is based on a massively successful game called Robotron 2084, created by Eugene Jarvis, the same guy who then proceeded to create Smash TV. Super Smash TV is the result of Beam Software porting it to the Super Nintendo, and let me tell you, the arcade difficulty, it didn't go anywhere. The good news though is that you can enjoy this incredibly difficult dystopian 1999 game show together with a friend. It's not incredibly long, only about two hours. But the issue, obviously, is its difficulty. It's like Max Steroid final boss Barry Bonds slamming a baseball bat into your nutsack. By the way, did you know that the same guy who designed Robotron 2048, Eugene Jarvis, also created the Cruisin' series? What about Defender? How about Nex Machina? He's gotten around during the history of arcade games. Now, Super Mario Kart kind of skirts the idea of multiplayer, but if you race with your friends, as long as someone places high enough, you can progress in the game. Now, personally, I suck at Super Mario Kart. I'm not afraid to mention that, so thank you to my friend Caleb for carrying me on his shoulders while mocking me the entire time. Super Mario Kart is the progenitor of modern kart racers, and because of its existence, we've encountered tons of fun racing titles, not only from Nintendo, but from other companies that took the formula and ran with it as well. Now, personally, I don't like this game, but that's just my opinion. I do hold a bias in favor of Mario Kart 64, or even Mario Kart DS, but if you want a good, clean, fun time with your friends, this is a great start. There were quite a few beat-em-ups on the Super Nintendo, Super Double Dragon, Rival Turf, Brawl Brothers, Final Fight 2, Captain Commando, and another one that's higher on this list. So stick around to see which one that is. The one that stands out to me in comparison to the other games is Knights of the Round, which is what happens when Capcom decides to take the formula that made Final Fight and the King of Dragons so fun and combines them to create a fantasy-based beat-em-up. We can play as King Arthur, Sir Lancelot, or even Sir Percival, and our job is to beat the fuck out of everything until we get to the evil king Garibaldi and unite Britain. Now if you like this game, I have to suggest checking out Capcom's Dungeons and Dragons beat-em-ups, Shadow over Mystara and Tower of Doom, because they are just as fun in the arcades. Secret of Mana the game that has such beautiful music that you tend to forget that your time is being wasted on a level that is fundamentally irritating. For those of you who don't know, Secret of Mana or Psychonet Setsu 2 is a game that in a single player setting is an action RPG that allows you to have two other AI controlled players that you can change the tactics for and as with most RPGs, you're able to grind incessantly to level up, which I usually don't mind. The reason I hated playing this game is because the computer controlled AI characters get stuck on walls all the time. Imagine driving down the interstate at 80 miles per hour, really feeling your groove, listening to some John Cougar Mellencamp, ignoring the fact that you didn't pay your phone bill, and then you take a swig of the A&W root beer that's been in your cup holder for longer than you're comfortable admitting, and in the seat next to you, it's your beautiful significant other, that girlfriend that you've loved since she drew a heart on your trapper keeper in the fifth grade, and you smile at her, and she smiles back. She leans in for a kiss, and then she grabs the fucking steering wheel and goes hard to port and you flip over 500 fucking times. That's what it's like playing with the computer. Your forward momentum is absolutely decimated by the programming of the game. However, that being said, that changes dramatically if you have friends to play this with. It goes from being a chore to being a genuinely fun game. I suggest playing it with friends. Kirby Superstar is an anthology, and we've covered it briefly on the Top SNES soundtracks episode, but I cannot stress how approachable this game is when it comes to playing with your friends. You can all but manifest a co-op partner at any time, be it controlled by the computer or by a human, and I don't know if that's just because Hudson loves the idea of having damn near infinite lives and focusing on the playability of the game, or if they just really like the idea of having an easier game for the demographic it's designed for. 
Either way, at any given time, Kirby can produce a helper because of the copy ability, and either the computer or your best friend can control the helper. So if you enjoy easier games, this is a perfect veg out title. Much like Super Mario Kart, Rock and Roll Racing has a system in place where you can race with your friends to beat the game. The characters you play as are unique, and the perspective, while being isometric, isn't that bad once you get used to it. There's also a mechanic that allows you to leave your loser friend behind. It offers them a password, so if they want to continue the game from their own perspective on their own time with their own score, they can, which I found to be pretty nifty. Oh, and Tim Fallon did the music for this, so you already know it's one of the greatest games ever. <laughs> Out of all of the beat-em-ups that the Super Nintendo had to offer, Turtles in Time is hands down the best, and it came in two flavors, arcade and the home console conversion, both of which are relatively faithful to the source material that it's based on, specifically the second live-action movie, The Secret of the Ooze. And it was massively fun, no matter what medium you played it on. If you remember going to Chuck E. Cheese and playing a four-player Turtles beat-em-up, this is the sequel to that game. In fact, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the arcade was the highest grossing arcade game of 1990. For damn good reason, it was just good, clean fun. Add in the fact that you can play this at home with your friends and you're all set. Now there are some differences on the Super Nintendo port, but a majority of them are improvements versus reductions, and most of them are relative to the capabilities of the Super Nintendo. This is an expensive game though, so be prepared to shell out some money. When you think of high-octane, no-bullshit, in-your-face, relentless action, Contra has always been the way to go. Contra on the NES was a spectacular time, Super C was a gigantic jump in difficulty and the capabilities of the NES, and then we had Contra 3, which guess what? Barry Bonds is coming back, but he's got nails on his bat. Yeah, this is probably one of the most difficult games on the Super Nintendo, and it doesn't help that Konami cucked up the Konami code, not even including it in the US version. It is in the Japanese version though, so if you want to cheat your way through this, you'll need the Japanese ROM, and even then the Konami code isn't right. It's down, down, right, right, and start. It's like a Hadouken motion if you want to get 30 lives. There's also a stage select code, again, only in the Japanese version. One of the more interesting aspects of Contra 3 is that we have top-down levels, which I'm not particularly fond of, but they do introduce a slight change in what we've come to expect from the franchise. If you like being bodied an unrealistic amount of time in the name of fun, check out Contra 3. And if you want a slightly easier experience, don't forget the games on the Game Boy as well, but it's not nearly as fun. In stark comparison to the energy in the previous entry, Goof Troop is an action-adventure game that puts you in control of Goofy and Max, working together to solve puzzles and to defeat bosses. Now, the game itself, it can get old rather quickly, but if we're talking about two people working together to accomplish an objective, this game immediately comes to mind. It's not inherently difficult, but if I was back in 1993 and smart enough to not be shitting my diaper, because I was born in 1992, I think it would have been fun to sit down in front of a TV, playing a game based on a wonderful show. And that's all from me today. What were some of your favorite co-op gaming memories from your childhood? I would absolutely love to hear them down below. If you get a chance, feel free to hit that subscribe button and that like button. I need you to be my co-op partner to beat the hardest game out there, the YouTube algorithm. As always, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes. Fortifier out.